Today I'm going to show you how to cook charred cabbage wedges with Caesar leg dressing. So it's sweet, robust, it's super super simple and just as delicious. So we're going to go through three different ways how to cook cabbage, deconstruct it a little bit, go through the nutritional facts, just a little bit of that to start it off and then we're going to dive into five really essential must know tips for cooking this incredible vegetable. We're going to answer a couple of different questions that you all had about cabbage like is there another way to cook it other than boiling and can you actually overcook it so we'll get to that in a bit it is a must eat vegetable if you are looking to prevent cancer if you want to protect your heart and if you want to prevent any sort of vision loss so the fermented type of cabbage like sauerkraut or kimchi actually has more lacto probiotic awesomeness than yogurt. So like I said, must have in all of these different realms. Another fun tip, in the 17th and 18th centuries, sailors who were taking these really long expeditions actually relied on sauerkraut to prevent scurvy because it created all these awesome probiotics in their gut. Now let's get into deconstructing this thing. There are a ton of different types of cabbage out there, like more than 400, 400 varieties or something along those lines. This is a Napa cabbage, which we will be cooking today. We'll get to that in a bit. Purple and green cabbage are obviously the most common and the purple kind actually has more nutrients. So that's something to look out for. When you are buying these vegetables, you want to look for the firm, the crisp, the plump ones. Um, obviously this Napa, this Savoy cabbage too, is a little bit more wrinkly, a little bit more leaf-like rather than that really firm bulb that you usually get in that green and purple varieties. So these, it doesn't need to be as firm, right? But those really tight ones, um, you want it to be really tight. And anything wilted or brown, black spots, anything like that, you want to look towards the other really crisp, clean types. Cabbage is prized winter vegetable because of its storing abilities. It can actually hold up to like two months in your refrigerator and still be as good as it was. When you're storing it, make sure to store it in actually brown paper bags and you don't want to wash it prior to storing it because it's actually going to create more of a wilt um, by the time that it's ready after that storing. So keep it dry and wait to wash it until you're ready to actually eat it. So you actually can overcook cabbage, so just make sure to not do that. If you do overcook it, it actually leads to a stinky smell. I know a lot of people that actually stay away from cabbage because it creates uh, bloating or some sort of upset digestion. So to prevent that, number one, don't overcook it. Number two, you can actually add some really cool spices and herbs like coriander, cumin, or mint, fennel, um, ginger to cabbage when you're cooking it and it will reduce the bloating that you have. So those are some fun tips in terms of cooking this guy. Now let's go through four different ways you can cook cabbage. Number one, you can actually peel off these leaves and you can blanch the leaves. The second way to eat cabbage is slicing it really, really thin in a julienne and you're gonna keep it raw and you're gonna add your favorite type of dressing. So whether that is a creamy kind of thing, mayo-based or more of a vinaigrette, oil-based, it's coleslaw. Third way is fermenting, which we talked a little bit about earlier, which means sauerkraut or kimchi. A lot of different cultures have their own way of fermenting cabbage. But today, we're gonna do method number four, which is actually charring it. And what I really, really love about this recipe is that you actually, I like to cook it so the bottom is charred and you get that really delicious, you know, charry kind of flavor. I like to leave the other side of the wedge actually not cooked as much. And so you still have that kind of coleslaw-y freshness of the cabbage coming out as well. And then you just drown it in that really good Caesar dressing. You can actually char in a grill. 
um, or other different, you know, cast iron is great for this cooking vessels that really work for you in your kitchen um, or your way of cooking. But I think the stove is the most commonly used applicable to most people. So we're gonna go with that version today. So before we do that, let's dive into our mise en place a little bit, showing what we have out, ingredients, equipment, for what we're gonna be cooking. We're gonna start by making the dressing, which we're gonna start with our lemon. We always roll this guy out first to kind of activate the juiciness inside. Then I have a little setup over here. I always use a little bowl with a little strainer and then my hand juicer. So when I put the lemon halves in here and squeeze them out, the seeds and everything else like that gets caught in this little strainer and then the rest of the juice is left on the bottom. So we have our lemon juice ready. Now we get our eggs and we're going to crack them over one bowl, take out the whites to leave the yolks in a different bowl. Now the white is still perfectly good, so you can save this for even just making like an egg white omelet or something like that. You can whip it up, you can make meringue. Then you want a little bit of anchovy and you're gonna take it out and actually mince it up really, really fine. Of course, if you're vegetarian or vegan, um, this is not gonna be something that you add. Actually, a cool substitute if you are one of those things is seaweed, because it still has that like saltiness, that brininess from the sea, um, but is obviously plant-based. I love to use a lot of herbs, so in this example we're going to use the top of the parsley. I'm going to reserve like a fair amount of the bunch for the end, the garnishing. I like to add some of the leaves at the end um, to brighten it up a little bit too, so I'll show you that later. You want to get this as fine as you can. So if you prefer, you can actually do this in the food processor. If you are using a food processor or a blender, uh, something with a motor, you do need to make sure that you're not over processing these herbs. After a while, we'll like start cooking the herbs and then it takes the freshness out of it. So now that you have all of the things, you have this anchovy, you're actually gonna just add your yolks right in there. You're gonna add a little bit of, we're gonna start with the mustard. Add a little bit of mustard too. And then you're just gonna blend all this up. Add a little bit of your salt. You can add the lemon juice, a steady stream of olive oil. So now I'll add the herbs and just mix those right in as well. It smells so amazing because of the parsley, it's so fresh and you can smell a little bit of the mustard too. So it's just this like really bright and earthy mixture. It's so good. So good and rich and you can see how thick it is. Now let's cut the cabbage. You can do this so many different ways, you know, depending on the application that you're doing with the type of cabbage variety that you're actually using. In this example, we are going to leave this kind of core on because we're gonna keep it in wedges and that core is actually gonna keep all the leaves together. So we're just gonna slice it down the middle and then slice it into wedges from there. You can chop right into the center in the middle. This is what it looks like. Super, super beautiful. For this application, I'm going to cut it into fours, so I'm actually going to cut it into halves and then once again into another half. It's like really pretty, perfect little wedge. First, I'm going to add a little bit of this olive oil to each one, and I do like to make sure that it's like incorporated into each one of the leaves. And then I'm gonna turn on my heat source and we're gonna move over there, cook these things up a little bit, really get that one side nice and charred, and then we add the dressing on. I'm gonna start by turning on my heat source. You're gonna keep it on a medium high to high heat. Go ahead and put your hand over the pan. You can feel the heat and you'll know if it's hot. Once it's hot, you can add a little bit of your oil Go ahead and add your cabbage right in. You're just gonna keep it there. Flip. Add a little bit of liquid amino. Cover. So now that you have this charred wedge, you can bring it back over here and add your dressing. And like I said before, I like to add it into each layer. So you're almost like painting each leaf just a little bit with the dressing. So it's kind of like a version of like tossing a salad, but in a wedge form. Finally, 
choose a plate you want to serve. In this circumstance, I'm going to use this awesome humble ceramics bowl. It's like one of my favorites. It has this amazing weight to it that you can just feel like the sincerity of what they're crafting over there. And then I'm going to finish with a little bit more of this dressing just right on top. Just a few flakes of this Malden salt. It's crunchy, it also gives it a little bit more like depth. Next, I have my herbs. I have these sorrel leaves. It kind of looks like a spinach leaf, but it's super lemony, super, super delicious. So you really don't need that much of this. Then I have the rest of these parsley stems. And then I'm gonna finish with these toasted walnuts. And that's it. That is the charred cabbage with Caesar-like dressing. Well, this is my favorite part where we get to try homemade cabbage. It makes it really sweet, subtly sweet. And then the dressing is actually really like umami savory because of the anchovies and the mustard, etc. The walnuts are really nice, like grounding kind of earthiness and a little sweet as well, but then I love the freshness of the herbs, like the parsley and the sorrel is really nice little pop of like lemon. I hope you try this one at home and you can learn to make these kind of recipes with my inspiration ritual. It's free. You can also get my newsletter for free. Just sign up, you know, check out the show notes for links and please subscribe to Vegetables in Vogue. There's going to be some awesome new seasonal veggies coming up regularly. So stay tuned.